Hello everybody, I'm John from Dark Horse Motor Company, of course. My good friend Brian, who also works here. Hello. Um, good to see you, Brian. Good to see you as glad, well. Glad you could join us for one of these video series. Yeah. Um, we've gotten some questions over the last six months in regards to our, our total indicated runout tool that we sell through Drake Specialties and through, of course, our dealer network, which we really look for uh, technicians to get into their toolbox. So, of course, uh, everyone can properly measure uh, crankshaft runout in cases. We've gotten some questions, uh, uh, directions. My good friend Danny Fitzmaurice from Zipper says, you really need to put out a video in regards to how to utilize the tool to all its capabilities. So we figured we'd, we'd put a few things together. We're not going to do every single engine case that this thing does, but uh, um, we figured we'd start with the, with the primary ones, which of course right now is is M8s and, and twin cams. Um, Brian, maybe you want to do a, a little bit of explanation. Of course, this is an M8. Uh, this is one of our, our display cases. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff, right? As far as how that runs out. Um, being one of our displays, of course, it's, it's very good as far as run out. <laughs> Indicator barely moves, right? So, um, we have that going, but the the key to our to our tooling, of course, is that uh, a mechanic technician uh, guy at home can take this piece and basically change from uh, an M8 and switch it to a twin cam um, in the matter of of mere seconds and um, of course get it going this way in short order. Um, we didn't want to be able to to make it that you had to get a whole another piece um, and of course this is going to be wrong. No, it's going to be right. <laughs> Thank goodness I double checked. but. Um, in this case now, you can take this piece and run with it. Um, as you can see, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time, but basically you can turn this one. Is it touching? Is it touching? Sure. Um, I believe this one has about a foul run out, right? So uh, this is one that we just made for somebody. Foul run out as well within our spec. A human hair. Of course, is three thou, right? Something like that, yeah. So um, <laughs> you see a lot of videos out on the internet um, running out at zero. That's really good. Uh, our primary focus is always at the main bearing surfaces because that's what the crankshaft spins on. Um, and that we want under a thou at those bearing surfaces. Uh, everything else is a byproduct of how true that flywheel is on the main bearing races. So, <clears throat> um, that being said, you can take it, and when you when we do this, the biggest factor in this piece is how do you how do you use it quickly? Of course, you always you get a you get this thumb screw that comes along with the kit, and what did I do with the Allen wrench? And this is really what Danny Fitzmaurice was asking us to do. Basically, as you can see, it has twin cam, Evo. This is a sprocket shaft for an Evo. And you turn it around, you have the sprocket shaft for early twin cam, sprocket shaft for late model twin cam, and M8s, and then the M8 pinion shaft. And so what you want to do is if you're going to use it on an M8, you basically take your indicator and you find the M8 circle and you drop it in and tighten it up. And then you can install it specifically onto the M8, right? Pretty straightforward and simple and quick. And of course, this fits in everybody's toolbox and you got something for everybody. So um, I guess when we get over to 
the opposite side. Um, this one being our display, we, we have the primary setup already uh, a cutout on it so that we can show it to people. We have our uh, cylindrical magnets in place. So uh, the proper way of measuring any splined sprocket shaft uh, or any splined shaft as a whole is gauge pins, right? That's an industry standard, been that way for forever and ever. When they want to measure how large that shaft is, they're going to use gauge pins. So we are able to, of course, use magnetic gauge pins and utilize it in that method. And of course, um, it's going in through the sprocket shaft, late model twin cam and M8 sprocket shaft. Uh, the only part that isn't supplied in this tool is the primary bolt. Um, but that, of course, you would have with the given motorcycle that you're working on. And you can install this piece using that because it's a, th it's a through bolt through the inner primary and it works and you have that tool right there for you. Mm. So <clears throat> we, have a, we have a few questions that people have been asking um, for given reasons. I figured <laughs> Brian would be yeah. the perfect guy to relay those, right? Yeah, so over the, t over the time of having this tool, we've had some few questions about uh, operation. We've had questions about usage. One of the questions, John, was um, some of the guys are claiming there's really no um, good measurement that's coming off of the sprocket side. So we want to touch on that a little bit. What, what, what is the good measurements that we're looking for and why are they so important? Well, we've, we've found through, of course, you've been dealing with our motor sprocket for mm -hmm. quite a while, fielding uh, phone calls, um, guys that we, we ask people to measure the run out on the sprocket shaft because we have found that, that unfortunately, late model sprocket shafts can bend. Yeah. Um, the splines can be cut off center. Uh, and that's where we wanted to develop the proper measurement of that sprocket shaft because we recognize uh, the, the complaints, noise complaints that we get with our yeah. motor sprocket uh, can certainly be generated from excessive runout on the sprocket shaft. Uh, I also firmly believe that uh, premature wear on the OEM compensator comes from uh, excessive runout on the sprocket shaft. So we worked pretty hard at developing that method to do that. And there is an accurate measurement that you can get because what this act, this measurement gets you is exactly what the runout is of the overall unit. So it's not just the sprocket shaft runout, it's the splines on the sprocket shaft and where that's at. And um, anybody that tells you that splines can't be cut off center is not based in reality because we've seen it Many and times. we deal with it and we have we don't want to see anything over eight thousandths run out on that sprocket shaft for our motor sprocket. Uh, that's very important to us because we recognize the ramifications that can happen when it's mm -hmm. when it's over that, right? Absolutely. So, um, well, another question that we've gotten is why not just use a magnetic base? It's a lot cheaper than our tool. So I just want you to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, well, we're using a magnetic base right there on a piece yeah, of wood. Yeah, and it right? works really good yeah, for DJI. Yeah, it holds DJ our microphone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing is where do you put that magnetic base, right? Um, as you can see, of course, this is primary aluminum and magnetic bases don't yeah. work very well on that. So uh, you could say, well, I'm going to put the magnetic base on the frame or I'm going to put it on the motorcycle lift. The problem with that is any touring model is rubber mount. Yes, sir. And unfortunately, rubber has a negative impact on when you're trying to measure accurately as far as what you have going on. So we wanted something that could be affixed to the case or the primary throughout whatever measurement it is, and you take out of any kind of, you could use a mag base on an Evo 
rigid mount Evo, rigid mount soft tail, something along those lines and attach it to the frame. And once you get all your angles and everything set up right, it should give you an accurate measurement. Um, on a touring model, there's nothing accurate that you're going to get. And especially when you say, well, I'm going to put it on the, I'm going to put it on the lift and measure it. And now you're trying to turn it over. You, you have so many variables that you put into that measurement. You might as well throw it right out the window. We so, wanted to build a tool that works for everything and not just one particular thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I truly believe we, we hit it. You, you can use it for sportsters. I mean, I've used it. Uh, Unfortunately, we never actually put the directions on there for Sportsters, yeah. but I mean, it, we don't forget about Sportsters here. Maybe that's to come. Yeah, well, it should be. It should have got on this one and maybe, <laughs> yeah. But it, it does work for those because I've tried it on a couple of them. But the uh, back to anything, anything uh, shovel, uh, post generator to current, it will do every single shaft measurement that we have for big twin Harley Davidsons. Sounds pretty universal to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one of the biggest questions that I get time and time again about uh, the shafts, what is an acceptable run out on any of the shafts? Well, I touched on it a little bit before, as far as our spec. Um, and, and if you look at Harley spec, that's been a moving target over the years. Um, you, I, I, I'd like to believe we're like the only ones that measure um, that shaft as uh, the sprocket shaft, the output shaft, the PTO shaft, as critically as we do. Uh, that is something that, that we've done since its inception in 07, actually 06 Dyna, uh, but that is, we pay critical attention to that. We have put down that we don't want to see anything over eight thousandths at the end of the sprocket shaft on the splines using the cylindrical magnets so that we know that we have an accurate measurement of what your compensator or motor sprocket is going through. Uh, we look at the end of the pinion shaft which like I said before is a byproduct of how true the rest of the crankshaft is and that is uh, we don't want any more than three. Um, I'm gonna say 90 some percent of our, the, the ones that come out of here are one or less. Um, and I'm pretty proud of that. The, the unfortunate thing is I, we witness ends of pinion shafts that are ground mm. a thou yeah. off center. So anything less than how far that is ground off center um, can be certainly, uh, uh, if it's ground a thou off center, there's no way that you can get it less than a thou off center unless you basically distort the rest of the wheel to try to get to that point. Um, I, I know that I've said it in a number of videos before, but really what we are looking for is under a thou at the main bearing surfaces on centers. Uh, we've done that since since day one. Anybody that tells you that you cannot true a, a modern day crankshaft on centers, um, I'm afraid doesn't have a full understanding of, of what that crankshaft needs to do. And again, we're looking at the bearing surfaces because the crankshaft spins on those two bearing races and that is what is uh, critical to the longevity of the crankshaft. So again, we put out this tool trying to make sure that every technician, every guy that picks up that tool or girl for that matter, yeah, there's uh, out there in the industry too. Uh, is able to measure every critical point within that crankshaft. So uh, I hope that clears it up. If there's any questions or concerns, you know, Brian has been heading this up uh, as far as our, our YouTube videos coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, he is he he wants content that we can talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys have any questions for us, don't be afraid to ask us. We'll do our best to get all the answers out there for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to try and have uh, some more videos up here as we go. 
Thank you very much. See you guys.